Wisdom. Prudentia. Justice. Justicia. Temperance. Temperantia. Courage. Fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Today's guest is Mike O'Connell. Michael is a comedian, kids entertainer, and corporate speaker. He has appeared on Australia's Got Talent, he's open for Weird Al Yankovic, and he has a knack for making boring topics funny, including this weird thing that this entire podcast is about, Stoic philosophy. And if, I'm, if I remember correctly, fate permitting, that's a big deal right now, fate permitting, he will be speaking at Stoicon 2020. Is that correct, Michael? Absolutely, yes. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it is a bit fate permitting, isn't it? With with the whole COVID nineteen coronavirus, I'm not sure what we're calling it. The plague. The plague. The plague. <laughs> the plague. Um, let's see if I'll be able to get to Canada for Stoicon. But at the moment, fate permitting, I will be there in October. I have already booked my flight, so if so, we will cross <laughs> paths. And if not, I will be S O L. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens uh so are you, are you the opening act for stoicon i i i'm not sure the running order i don't i don't know maybe i yeah i'll be donald robertson's opening act <laughs> maybe he'll, you know i'll do a quick you know 20 minutes he'll come up and he's be like hey who here likes philosophy <laughs> you know like Last week I was in Austin and they knew how to be philosophical. <laughs> no one's philosophical like Toronto. What? Maple. Oh, thing. then then say something about the maple leaves and then you'll really get them going, right? The the local <laughs> hockey team. Uh, so how are things where you are in the uh, light of the coronavirus? Can you still get uh, toilet paper there? Uh, no, no, actually, I went out last night and it was a pretty crazy scene at the local supermarket. Mm -hmm. uh, people have panic bought all the toilet paper, all the hand sanitizer, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just gone. Even stuff that you wouldn't think. Like my my wife was like, "Oh, let's, you know, we've got a slow cooker." She was like, "Let's make a, you know, a masaman curry. Let's do that." And I went there and they've bought all the curry paste and they've bought like <laughs> just all the potatoes. And I'm like, all right, well, well, I suppose we're not eating curry then. Yeah, I know the rice was all sold out here. It's, 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 uh, I, one thing I noticed you can't buy hand sanitizer, but at the liquor store, there's vodka. So there's always that option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just double down and get some very strong, you know, the vodka and just. Rub it in there. That's right. That's right. In, in, and when the when the plague ends, people will start drinking the hand sanitizer. They're like, <laughs> well, you know, I got twenty eight bottles of it. What else am I gonna do? With it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so let's uh, let's go back in time. Um, uh, what made young Michael Connell say, "You know what? I want to do. I want to be a comedian." Um. I'm People ask this all the time. I wish I had a better answer. Uh, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I just always, as a kid, I liked making people laugh. I think I, real, I realized that pretty early that, yeah, making people laugh was a fun thing to do. Um, I grew up in the country, though, so I never really saw stand-up. I didn't realize it was a thing. Mm -hmm. So from a very young age, I was doing like, a lot of youth theatre, a lot of school plays, performances like that. And for a long time, I thought I wanted to be an actor. Um, but then eventually I went on, like, a drama camp, and there were kids there. They could, like, cry on command. They, you know, they were in all these dramatic <laughs> scenes. I was like, I just like pretending to be a chicken and running around <laughs> on stage. Right, right, right. myself with things, you know. Um, so I was like, that's probably not me. And I realized I probably got, I got a lot of roles in like school plays, probably because it was a small school. There wasn't a lot of competition and I just had, I just had no fear of performing. Okay. Whereas other kids were like, oh, I'm not going to audition. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And then the teacher would be very frustrated when I was, you know, 
making Hamlet do Pratt Falls or something. <laughs> that's that's not in the script. Like Stop it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dig that. Um, later, in, later in high school, I met a bunch of kids who were riding around town on unicycles, and I was like, oh, what's going on with this? Oh, biker gang, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> World's weirdest biker gang. Um, I was like, how do I join up? They're like, you got to punch up a clown. Uh, <laughs> But no, they were like, uh, we, we've got a circus school at uh, another school in, in the town. And they said, you can come after school and learn to juggle and stuff. So I learned that. I was doing that for quite a while. I, I was impressed and by what, your, one of your latest YouTube videos of, of your juggling act while you're, while you're talking. And uh, oh. that was impressive. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I've, I've gotten back into it lately because, you know, part of... Being a performer, you always need a, another string to your bow, and um, yeah, I've just been doing a. I've been doing a bit of kids performing uh, during the day, and I've got a kid myself now, and I'm getting back into it. I thought, oh, this is this is a skill I used to do heaps of, and I used to. I did all through through high school. I was very into the juggling, very into performing uh, in the circus, uh, but then after a while, I realised like. I just liked dropping the balls and doing stupid things and talking to the crowd more than I liked doing the actual tricks. <laughs> and and then when I was about 16, my mum took took me to see a stand-up comedy show for kids. Hmm. And there was a comedian on stage. His name was Dave O'Neill. And uh, he, he was amazing. He did all these routines about his dad, walking around the house in underpants. I thought, oh, that's amazing. That's what I want to do. Like... <laughs> This is this is exactly you know. Oh, he doesn't have to juggle or anything. He can just talk, and people <laughs> laugh. I'm like, why am I learning all these hard juggling tricks? Um, I so just, I just just get up there and talk. Yeah, yeah, just get up there and talk. And so from yeah, from about the end of high school, I started trying to get into stand up, which was quite hard because you know I was still pretty young. Uh, but yeah, uh, have done it ever since. So. When did Stoicism come into the picture for you then? This uh, weird well, philosophy from ancient Greece and Rome. How did that pop yeah, up? Yeah, that, was, that wasn't until a lot longer. Okay. Um, I've always been interested in philosophy and, well, sort of not so much philosophy, but like psychology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of stand up and performing in general, I guess, is, is very about understanding people, understanding your crowd, understanding yourself. Sure. <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's a very difficult industry. You have to sort of, you know, learn how to take some lumps and bumps along the way. And I think it might have been Tim Ferriss was talking about stoicism on his blog or something like that. And I just started, yeah, I just read about that on his blog and then I started getting interested and I – read William Irvine's um, oh, the, book. The Gateway Drug. Yeah, yeah, The Gateway Drug that gets everyone into it. Right, right. And I was like, this is fascinating. And I read a lot of that, and I listened to um, a bit of uh, CBT stuff mm -hmm. by Albert Ellis um, just on YouTube. And I was like, oh, you know, there's – people would say, oh, you know, there's links between the Stoicism and the CBT. And I'm like, this is – very much, it very much aligns with what I'm, the way I sort of think. Right. Uh, uh, Irvin calls it con congenital stoicism, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Natural stoicism, congenital stoicism, however you want to describe it. Um, I, I just, I just think that the comedy industries or the arts industry is hard enough that you sort of just have to develop these coping mechanisms. <laughs> But, you know, natural selection, a lot of uh, stoic sort of attitudes, sort of uh, you build them up in yourself. Well, um, as, a kid, as a kid, I loved uh, Buddhist philosophy. Oh, I read yeah. a lot of okay. some books. Um, but a lot of, you know, part of it I quite like, but then, you know, get deeper stuff with the Zen and whatever, and I'd be like, just I just couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't quite get there. Sure. and. Yeah, just Stoicism was the more logical, practical, accessible version of that. And I was like, this is, yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah, there's a big pragmatic side to, to this philosophy that's not just 
yeah, there's not a, a lot of mysticism or anything involved uh, if uh, as as you're trying to explore it. Um, I was I was going to ask you. So I teach for a living, uh, standing in front of like seventy people or whatever. And if if I'm doing a bad job, they just sort of fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> now, okay. in your world, <laughs> if if they don't like something you're doing, they often feel obliged to let you know about it, right? And, yes. <laughs> and so then, uh, how, so have you, were you naturally good at just letting that roll off your back or have you been, have you found stoicism to be an effective tool to, to help uh, armor yourself with that and then make yourself better because of that feedback? I mean, how, what's the interplay of those variables? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I think I take a fairly stoic <laughs> approach to hecklers. <laughs> Part of it is, like you're saying, you, you got to take feedback. You go, okay, you know, this is this is uh, the audience telling me that I need to work on this material. I need to sharpen this part of the routine up. There's that. There's also um, you can take the attitude that this guy heckling, you know maybe there's something going on in his life. He's, you know, uh, he's got something going on with him. Uh, a lot of comedians are like, oh, you know, hecklers, we've got to shut him down. We've got to, this guy, I'll try and destroy him. <laughs> but I I don't like that uh, confrontational approach. Sure. Um, I, I'm a bit more like Epic Tetis, who says, you know, when someone insults you, you they're really revealing their own ignorance. Um, or they're either, you know, they're either revealing something about yourself, which is what we said before, sure. uh, I need to improve my material or they're <laughs> revealing their own ignorance and then they need help. So I just sort of have a nice chat with them. And often that works great with hecklers. Cause they're like, they'll call stuff out. You're like, what's going on, man? What's go <laughs> Are you okay? Let's have a chat. Let's <laughs> and then they're sort of like, Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, oh, you're you're <laughs> a human a you're cheap. a human being up there too. Oh, dang. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you make that sort of connection, and then then they feel sheepish about it, or they don't feel sheepish about it, but you keep them talking, and then they sort of make fools of themselves <laughs> without. You take the Socratic approach to it, and you just keep asking them questions, and eventually they dig themselves into a hole, and then you're like, ah, oh, I got you. All right, now, now you sit down. Uh <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, so, so, uh, how then did you decide, I mean, what in the world made you say, you know what I want to do? I want to work stoicism into a comedy routine. <laughs> You know what's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what the world's crying out for? More <laughs> ancient Greek and Roman philosophy with jokes. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I always want to with my comedy. I want to write stuff that, firstly, that I'm interested in. Sure. And at the time I wrote that routine, I was spending a lot of time reading Stoic books, listening to a lot of podcasts, um, and I was like, you know, this is all going around in my mind. It's just naturally sort of I'm getting some jokes out of it. Like I think a lot of a lot of what the Stoics talk about is sort of uh, brutally honest, and they, you can get a lot of comedy from that yeah especially uh, especially the manual or the discourses i'd say uh epictetus is really yeah. good at being just blunt <laughs> yeah calls it depending on your translation he's calling everyone blockheads and you know he's like what are you doing i can imagine him giving you know talks to his students being just very you know slapping them upside the head <laughs> think about it, you know, that sort of thing getting out there um so i think that's really cool and even like Albert Ellis in his, I listened to a few of his CBT talks and he's borderline hilarious at points. <laughs> um, so I think there's just a lot of natural fodder um, in the philosophy anyway. Um, I also, you know, comedy, there's so many comedians out there doing so much stuff all the time. And, you know, 
stuff about dating, uh, you know, airline food. It's all been done to death. <laughs> so, so it is a sort of thing of like, what else can I talk about? Which some, you know, is challenging. You can see it like that. Or you can take, you know, like the stoic approach, the obstacle is the way. You can turn it around and go, no, this is an opportunity to dive deep and go, you know, talk about something weird and obscure and see what I can do. Yeah. Um, before I did this, I actually did a routine on um, Bitcoin and I was I was doing a TV show, a local TV show. It's kind of like, you know, Letterman or, you know, The Late Show, but on a, like a $20 budget. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we, uh, and in the writer's room, I was like, Bitcoin's a thing. Let's do Bitcoin. And they were like, look, cryptocurrency is the weird. It's, we don't even understand it. How are we going to write a routine on it? But I worked really hard and I managed to write three minutes on it and did it on the show and, you know, all the Bitcoin enthusiasts loved it. So I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is an – I really enjoyed the challenge of, of taking a topic that was unusual in the world of comedy and quite dense and a bit technical and then finding ways to add jokes to it and so when i came to the stoic stuff i was like oh this is an opportunity to do that on a larger scale yeah 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 it's um it's kind of like i would say it's a lot like um uh i tell my students to study to learn something you you read it and then you have to kind of reinterpret it yourself uh, mm. And then when you can manipulate it that way, you're really learning it. And to write comedy about it, you're going to have to know it really well. That's a yeah. it's a way of practicing it, right? Yeah, uh, this is this is my process for learning anything. I um, tell my wife, oh, I'm I'm going to do a routine on this, and then <laughs> then, I, then I spend ages, you know, putting in all the information. So right now, I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn Spanish and, and my wife's like, why are you doing this? You don't, you know, Australia is not like America. We're a long way from Mexico. Or <laughs> Spain. Oh. We don't have a ton of Spanish speakers in Adelaide where I live. And um, she's like, why are you bothering? And I'm like, oh, it's going to be good for jokes, baby. We're going <laughs> to have some uh, muy bueno chistes, muy pronto. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm working on it. Excellent. Well, well, it keeps your mind. That's the process. Keeps your you mind just, going. Like you're saying, you just put in a lot of information, a lot of information, and it was with the with the stoicism. Uh, I I was reading the books, listening to the podcast, and I got, you know, some basic, uh, some uh, small bits of uh, material, and I had about you know ten minutes, fifteen minutes of stuff just from naturally what I'd already read. But then I was like, oh, I got to explain this bit or I have to explain something else. And then I'm like, okay, back to the books, do more reading, more reading, more reading. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know how much, but it's thousands of hours reading tons of books. And then you get like uh, a small joke out at the end, you know, it's like, <laughs> Like, a lot of it's like a wood chipper, a lot in to get a little bit out of the other side. Much, much like your uh, clip on Australia's Got Talent that I saw earlier, uh, where you walk out and uh, uh, the clip I saw online was about twenty seconds long, and you blow uh, on a high note on your harmonica, and that yeah. was <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the entire bit. That's all that made it to air. When I did that, I actually performed like three four minutes but then they use like 30 seconds on tape <laughs> <laughs> so they really edited it down a lot of input for uh, a little bit of output <sighs> yeah but, yeah absolutely so so then you you put together a stoic comedy uh uh what i forget it was about 20 minutes long how long is that stoic comedy special that you uh, did? It's, ha it's half an hour half an on hour. tv um so i was doing about 45 minutes live in a show um and then i did like I did it. I did it in a couple of uh, comedy clubs. Did shows around town. Did a lot of tests. That's the other process. So you write the material and you're testing the material in five minute spots at comedy clubs mm. around town. And it's kind of that's a bit of a challenge because you know you're it'll be a lineup of twelve comedians. You'll be the third act on, and they'll have been talking about you know 
you know, my ex-wife, rah, 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 or <laughs> what's the deal with airline food? And then you're coming on, you go, so Epic Tennis had written, you know, <laughs> outrageous eudaimonia. And, uh, when Nero uh, first uh, ordered him to commit suicide, Seneca said... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people are like, mm, what? So you have to sort of, like, ease into it. Um, and in my shows, I do, like, 10 minutes of just regular stand-up about whatever and then i'd ease into the stoic stuff um so yeah eventually we uh, i decided we're gonna film this i got together with friends from that late night tv mm -hmm. show that i was doing on community tv um we booked out a, a tv studio i brought in I had to organize all the crowd. We brought them all in. There was like 50, 60 people in the TV studio. And yeah, just performed performed about 45 minutes of the show. And then we edited it down to about 30 minutes, which is what's on YouTube now. Yeah, I, I've shared the link with uh, listeners in the past, but I recommend everybody check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um is it, there's a shorter one where you're dressed. It all, it all helps. All, every, every share, every subscribe, <laughs> please get out there. People are always like, oh, we want more, do more. And I'm like, well, if you want more, just share around more. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. give me some likes and some views and make give it worthwhile. Likes. We'll make it happen. What, are, what Stoics do you uh, like the most? Is there a particular Stoic that you, that you find the most useful or helpful in your own uh, daily life? I... I like Epictetus mm -hmm. because probably because the Enchiridion, it's really, uh, you know, it's short, punchy, memorable. Um, yeah, I, I like his stuff. You know, Marcus Aurelius, great too. The meditations are fantastic. Um, Seneca's wonderful, but uh, often, you know, you don't have time to sit down and listen to or read the 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 full letters. Um, yeah, I think I think Epictetus is my guy, you know, and probably that's not by him because he didn't write any of it down. It's just <laughs> making the notes, but I I do enjoy the cliff notes of his right, talks. right, right. The short, yeah, short, yeah. the short, short version is uh, yeah quite handy because in daily life. You know, you don't have time to sit down and ponder it. You know, yeah, my dear Lucilius. Yeah, you're, you're a good player. You know, you you need something like, bam, you know. Yeah, the like you said, like, the slapping your student upside the head method, right? Yeah. The, what the heck's wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. short, sharp, direct. That's He's my guy. Um, so right now you are doing, are you still doing a lot of children's entertaining uh, along with other things? I, I do do a fair bit of children's entertaining. Um, right now, I've just finished a tour of the Adelaide Fringe and Perth Fringe festivals. Okay. Uh, we did a kids' show called Juggling versus Magic. I did the juggling. My mate did uh, the magician. He did the magic. And it was sort of like a variety art showdown. Um, we did, He did a trick. I did a trick. We went back and forth like that at the end an audience full of kids got to vote <laughs> on who they best, and the loser got a bucket of slime poured over them. All right. Uh, <laughs> so it was good fun. It was good fun. Kids, what I learned, um, kids love magic. <laughs> they are not as knowledgeable uh, about or excited by, magic, uh, by juggling. So I'd be there, and I, the kids would come into the – theater and they've already got you know i love magic or hogwarts or harry potter you know on their t-shirts <laughs> like, damn uh, 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 <laughs> yeah I'm like, i thought i thought greatest showman would give me a bit of a boost but um not not really uh the magician won most of the shows but i did hold my own and where and even though even though they were you know the kids would be there like magic 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 by the end of the show i'd be only losing if i lost i'd only lose by like uh, you know, one or two votes. So I think I held my own. I think I did all right. But losing by one or two votes is, uh, it's kind of like the, what was it? The stoic concept of the sage. Uh, you're not as, you're still just as corrupt, uh, as you were when you started to learn until you've reached sage, sagehood. It's kind of like, like you, you'll still drown even if you're only an inch under the ocean. Uh, <laughs> so losing by two votes, you still have a bucket of slime on your head, right? Uh, that's the hard <laughs> yeah, that's part. That's true. the hard part. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, good feedback, kids. I will. 
this is my, this is my opportunity to improve <laughs> on the next show. Yeah, I, I was going to say earlier that I think it's great that you did do some uh, and you do some stoic stuff in your comedy because if someone hears, oh, I like stoicism, they immediately, uh, in my mind anyway, people often think, oh, so you're like Eeyore, like, oh dear. I'm probably yeah. just going to die anyway, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or emotionless, uh, like Massimo likes to talk about Spock a lot. Right. So yeah. stoic comedy might seem like an oxymoron, but I think, I think it's really not. And, and I think a stoic would be uh, very happy to uh, entertain children. That's part of justice and being part of the community. Right. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think you're right. There's certainly that perception of, Stoicism as being very, I don't know, dour, very serious. But I, I don't know, I find it very much, um, I'm, I'm with William Irvine on this, This it's it's the philosophy of joy. It's, you know, streamlining your life, um, getting your head straight, and then just happiness flows out as a as sort of a byproduct. It's, yeah. I, I I remember when I was when I was writing that routine, I was living in a very rundown share house in Melbourne and living very simply. Um, just yeah, didn't have anything much, didn't do anything, but I was just very happy anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I can only attribute that to uh, you know. Uh, the right view on life. Sure. Having the right mm-hmm. mindset. You could have the easily sat answer. there and gone, Oh, I don't have a, a whatever. I don't have a iPod and I don't have a this and I don't have a that, but uh, it's, I guess it's how we focus on things. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm continuing in life. It's, it's weird. Now I'm, I'm quite different from where I was when I did that uh, routine. Now I'm married. I have a kid. Uh, I own a house, um, and <laughs> that's 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 more. Sometimes that's more of a stoic challenge because <laughs> I have all these luxuries, all these good things in life, and yet I still I stress about them. I find myself worrying. Oh, will I be able to make the mortgage payment? Right. Will I, you know, can I can I take care of this young baby? Um, and I just have to. Uh, and I and I think back, you know. <laughs> like five years ago or whatever it was, um, you had none of these things and you were happy then. And now you have all these really good things in your life and you're more worried than ever. What's going on with you? You should be, you know, super grateful for where you are. And I think, oh, yeah, and I take a minute, I take a pause, you know, try and, uh, you know, uh, think about, you know, circles of concern, look at the bigger picture, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It can help you wherever you are in life. And it's, yeah, it's kind of weird. From, but it's very from slave to emperor, good. right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Michael, uh, do you have anything? Uh, Stoicon's coming up. Uh, are you doing uh, any other festivals or anything uh, in your neck of the woods? Uh, right now I've had a ton of work canceled. I would imagine so. COVID-19. <laughs> um, so right now, uh, you know, my, uh, stoicism is being put to the test <laughs> uh, and I, I'm getting a master class in lo- living frugally and, uh, seeing things from new perspectives and, uh, you know, turning, turning obstacles to my advantage. <laughs> So, uh, right now, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. Um, we were about, I was actually about to do a tour of Canada, um, in April that might still be going ahead. It might not be going ahead. Uh, currently, uh, the Canadian government has shut all the borders. So I don't know if I will be able to do that or how I'll get into the country, uh, currently we've got fingers crossed that the ban will be lifted, but 
who knows at this stage. Um, I'm working on releasing stuff on – I'm looking more at online stuff right now, so I'm looking at releasing stuff on my YouTube channel. I've got a lot of uh, stuff saved up. Uh, I was going to release it later in the year, but maybe we'll shift up the time scale and start releasing stuff now. Um, yeah, doing podcasts like this one, checking stuff out on social media. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's currently where I'm at. Great. And uh, where can folks go to find more about you and more about your st- your work? Uh, pretty much I do. Uh, if you get on YouTube, uh, no, sorry, if you get on Google and you just Google Michael Connell, I'm sure all my stuff will come up. But uh, YouTube's a big focus for me right now. So check out YouTube, get on YouTube, type in Michael Connell, Michael Connell comedian. Um, I believe there's like a newscaster and maybe there's a preacher from America. Well, Sometimes you, there I, I sent, I sent you a screenshot, Michael, the other day. Oh yes. Also there was a, there was a, he got in trouble with the George Bush. I, I saw he, anyway, he, he's, he's dead either way, but it had his date of birth and death and your picture. It looked like uh, when, oh, when, when, when I Googled it, it had, his information, but it had a picture of you on stage. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. What, what was was it? Like, when did he pass away? Uh, 20, 2016 or so, I thought. 2016. Look, I probably died on stage in 2016. Oh, well, point. there you go. That must be it. <laughs> That's probably what they're talking about. He, he had this terrible gig at the Chuckle Hut. Uh, <laughs> Still talked about to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Michael, I really appreciate you joining the podcast today, and I hope we get to meet in person in StoicCon in October. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Connell, check out his uh, his stuff on YouTube. It's great. And uh, I'll put some links to his stuff in the show description. Michael, uh, thanks for joining once again. And um, as I end with all my, end all my podcasts, uh, carpe diem. Oh, thanks so much. Memento Mori. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com or by leaving a voicemail at 501-503-3132. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, carpe diem. <laughs>